Hello, and welcome to the Friedman Archives blog. Today I want to demonstrate to you some examples of banding, what causes it, and how you can eliminate it completely if it happens to you. There's actually two different types. One that can happen under computer-controlled LED lights, like this one here, from my buddy Kirk Tuck, and another which can happen to you when you use high-speed sync with a third-party flash. The good news is, if either of these happens to you, there's something you can do about it. So, in order to explain this, I just need to demonstrate to you the concept of electronic shutters, since the two of them are intricately bad, bad, bad. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using the Sony Alpha 7 R3, but this could actually be demonstrated using any camera that uses either an electronic shutter or what's called silent shooting. It's not unique to Sony. Uh, so first, here's what a mirrorless camera wants to do by default. Every time it takes a picture, it will close the shutter, open the shutter, for exposure, close it again, and finally open it again. Let me demonstrate. So for this, I need to turn the camera's electronic features off. Silent shooting is off, e-front cut shutter curtain is off. So this is a half second exposure. Every time you take a picture, you can hear the shutter sound twice. So what's going on when that happens? Why does it need to open and close twice? Well, first the shutter closes to be able to zero out all the different pixels in complete darkness. Then the shutter opens to start the exposure, and then the shutter closes again so the sensor can dump its data in complete darkness. And finally it opens again so you can have the live view. So that's two shutter cycles for every picture taken. I know what you're thinking, surely there must be a way not to wear out the shutter like that. Well, there sort of is, but it's not easy. In order to do it, Sony needed to redesign their sensors. With the first redesign, Sony was able to eliminate the need for the first shutter closing. Here's how they did it. This first feature, which eliminated the need for the first shutter curtain, is called E Front Curtain Shutter, which is completely unintuitive, but that's what it is. I'm gonna turn that one on. And now, whenever you take a picture, you'll only hear one shutter sound at the end. It's done like this. I press the button, Half a second exposure, and then you hear the shutter close. So with this feature enabled, the camera now only closes the shutter once, at the end of the exposure, which cuts the noise and the shutter wear literally in half. Is it possible to eliminate the second shutter curtain then? Yes. Most recent cameras can do that via a feature usually called silent shooting, and it works something like this. On my camera, you can invoke something called silent shooting, and you can turn it on. Now I'll take my half-second exposure, 1 in 1,000. Oh, there we go. Now it's overexposing right now because there's no lens and there's no f-stop and it's a half a second. But there's no first shutter curtain and there's no second shutter curtain. So with silent shooting, the sensor still offloads the contents one at a time to the CPU, starting at the top row and ending at the bottom row about 1 1 60th of a second later, depending on the camera model. So I've created a Photoshop simulator so you can visualize this process because once you understand what's going on, you can see where the interference pattern comes from banding. So here's my Photoshop simulator. It's actually comprised of a few different layers. On the bottom layer is a picture I took in Mont Blanc a few, about a decade ago. On top of that is the second shutter curtain. On top of that is the first shutter curtain. Now, the way the camera scans from top to bottom is very similar to the way the camera shutter works whenever you're shooting at extremely high speeds, like an 8,000th of a second. What happens is the first shutter curtain opens a little bit, and then before it finishes dropping all the way, the second shutter curtain is able to come down, allowing a traveling slit to expose your sensor. Note that this is the same reason you can't use flash with a silent shooting. The flash only lasts about a, a few thousandths of a second, but it takes 160th of a second for that scan to go from the top to the bottom when it's offloading the data to the CPU. You'd only be able to illuminate like one or two pixels at a time, one or two pixel rows at a time whenever you're shooting flash, and that's why it's disabled with silent shooting. So silent shooting is great as long as your subject isn't moving. But if you're shooting something that is moving, for example, sports, like this golfer here, you're going to get a distorted image. Since the golf club is at one place at the beginning of the readout, and then the golf club ends up at another position at the end of the readout. Another instance where silent shooting might cause problems is with computer-controlled LEDs like the kind you might find in a local theater. 
Now to understand why it's a problem, let me show you how computer controlled LEDs actually change their brightness. They don't do it by changing the voltage going to the bulb. Let's say you want your light to be half brightness. And let's say this represents the voltage being fed to the LED. If you want half brightness, you would feed your LED what's called a pulse, a train of pulses. Half the time they're on, half the time they're off. And the start of this is synchronized with the, sync, the 60 hertz of your AC, or 50 hertz if you're in some European countries. So that's how that's done. Rather than just lowering the voltage, it actually gives you a fraction of it. Now your eye can actually average all this together and it looks continuous, but not your camera because your camera and the eye see light differently. If the computer wants 20% brightness, it would give it an even skinnier pulse like that. 20% of the time it'll be on, 80% of the time it'll be off. Again, your eye averages it all together. But what does the camera see if it's using silent shooting. Let's get the computer again. So when you combine silent shooting with a dimmed LED, you're gonna get this kind of thing where the LED is on and then the scan continues and then the LED is off and the scan continues and then the LED turns on again and the scan continues. And what you get is this interference pattern. That's what's going on. So if you're shooting a fast moving subject sports or theaters with LED lighting, your best bet is to not to use silent shooting at all. Eliminating the first shutter curtain will be okay, but not the second one. One day this problem will be eliminated with the creation of what's called a global shutter, where everything is captured and offloaded from the sensor at once. To date, the only camera that comes even close to that holy grail is called the Sony Alpha 9, and they had to do some serious on-sensor buffering in order to achieve that. Okay, so there's another kind of banding that can occur if you're combining the elimination of the first shutter curtain and high-speed sync using a third-party flash. This one here is a Godox TT685. It's a great flash. It's radio controlled. It can trigger on the first or second strobes. You can use it with my studio strobes. It's wonderful. But let me show you what can happen if you push it to its extremes. Let me add this here on top, turn the flash on, and I'm going to set my shutter speed to something very fast, like let's say an eight thousandth of a second. I'll point it to this featureless wall here, take a picture, and nothing happens. Why not? Oh, I know why, because my uh, electronic shutter is on, and it's incompatible with the flash. So let's turn that off. Menu, silent shooting, off. E front cur curtain shutter is fine. You can use that with a flash, so I'll do that. So let's try this again. You can see some banding there. It's very, very faint. Let's try it again. Now for fun, let's try this again using the Sony flash. Sony flashes cost a bit more, but their engineering is much better around the edges. Let's have a look here. No banding at all. Great. So what's going on? Why is there banding to begin with? Well, let's get rid of this. This is what happens when your engineers get lazy. Normally, here's how a flash works. All of your energy is discharged in one short burst. Boom. 10,000th of a second or so. Great. When you have high speed sync, all that energy here is distributed over a much longer area, like there. How long is that area? Well, it's about the same amount of time it takes for the traveling slit in a high speed shutter to go from the top of the frame to the bottom of the frame, like I showed you with the computer. So that's in principle what happens. With high speed sync, you can shoot at a faster shutter speed, but your subject has to be much closer because the intensity of the flash is much closer. Great. Now, how do you, this is a flash, right? So how do you actually get a flash tube, which can only do bursts, to make it look like it's a continuous light? The answer is you try to fake it. What you're actually doing is putting together a whole string of tiny, tiny flashes all right next to each other. It appears to the film or the sensor as one long continuous burst. Okay, great. 
But what if your engineers weren't that good? Because producing a square wave is actually very difficult. If you got lazy engineers, this is what happens. You'll have a discharge and it'll look like a sawtooth wave. And then a second one comes like that. So discharge, discharge. They call it a sawtooth, a sawtooth wave because it looks like the blades, the teeth of a saw. And that's kind of what's going on here. If you have a third party flash, and most of the engineers are thinking, ah, nobody else would be shooting at high speed sync like that. Um, that could be an issue. So it's easier for them to design the capacitors and the discharge mechanism to make a sawtooth rather than a flat top. And that is the reason you're getting that interference pattern. Because again, the sensor's being written red from top to bottom and you'll get high peaks, you get low peaks, great. So that's how it's done. How do you eliminate this problem? The answer is, you just eliminate the E front curtain shutter feature, which is making the first shutter curtain go away. Turn that off and no more banding, even with third party flashes at high speed sync. How do you like that? Now, many of you are asking, well, why does that work? And as Ella Fitzgerald once said, beats me, but it does. And that's all you need to know. So that's the long and short of banding. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and you enjoy the way I explain complex things, you may enjoy some of the eBooks that we have on Fujifilm, Olympus, and Sony mirrorless cameras, the most popular models. Just go to FriedmanArchives.com and the list goes before you. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to spread the word.